I am just starting out on a five-week trip to the West Coast, so that's why I'm crossing the Hudson River into New York. <laughs> now, I am here to buy costume jewelry and then head back into New Jersey today because there are a couple of estate sales that look interesting, and I'm headed to them right now. Well, they're definitely jamming to the music here, so I'm going to have to speak over this a little bit. But this place is fun. It's not serious stuff, but it's fun stuff, and it's the right era. This is destroyed, unfortunately, Nippon 1910s. Piano music box here, priced at 12 Okay, that gives me a good indication that their prices are going to be reasonable enough for resale on things that I'm going to be interested in. And that's important to me because I'm not from this area, so I don't know what to expect in terms of pricing. Now I feel like anything cute that I like I can pick up. That's homemade, but certainly cheap enough. So, you know, I don't think they have anything incredible here, but I do really like this. This is Royal Gouda, and this is one of the jug decanters from the 30s. But it doesn't make a sound. Aww. But I will say this at least looks like it's a real estate sale with old stuff, vintage stuff, and things priced to go. So, let's see, Toledo, yeah, I've got those little spears already. Some vintage toys, but marginal quality. Youth skis look like they might have been fun to have. Rubber Santa, ooh, a teal typewriter, wow. I'm going to be getting a bunch of cats from my mother's collection to bring to the Rose City Vintage Market, so... Hmm, this is Goebel though. She didn't have any of these. This is full B mark from the early 50s, and for $8, I'll take that guy. A whole lot of Fisher Price. I see sold tags on these shelves, which is funny to me because I just thought of those as 1970s utility shelving. I see a cute lampshade over there. I wish there was a lamp to go with it, and there's some fashion. It looks like some of this is vintage. Definitely, this looks like a house that somebody lived in in the. 60s, 70s, up until recently, so I'd say it's a 50-year estate, and that's good. It means there's a chance of getting something. Ooh, Scottish wool. Uh, see, I think I might just take this. Yeah, that seems like it's really good quality, and the condition is good, and I think it's six bucks. All right, let's see. There's a sick call set up here on the wall. Wow, look at those lashes. Hehe, <laughs> those are hilarious. I see some jewelry. Ooh, definitely someone really liked the lashes, but I don't see anything in jewelry that looks particularly old or desirable. Ooh, I kind of like this little tuffet with the purple cushion on it. The rectangular tray is of different shape than we usually see, but it looks like the mirror is kind of spotted with age. That happens on these. So I think I'll leave that. Boy, this is um, very traditional. 1960s and 70s clock and lamp, and definitely a lot of this is not my personal taste in terms of the furniture, uh, but I do see things that are vintage. Oh yes, pinky and blue boy in card deck, a double card deck. I will say this place is very well organized, though, and I have been greeted in every room I've gone into, which I think is really nice. There seems to be people to help you. It's great. So, so far I'm impressed with the way at least this outfit runs their estate sales. I like the fact that there's the right era. I'm just not finding anything that's really great, high quality, that's exciting yet, but there's still half the house to go through. Ooh, very teal again. Gotta say that's a fun outfit. Little travel alarm. Oh, it's missing something though. Darn. Yes, these very, very late 60s dramatic Spanish conquistador lamps are, are really kind of a hoot. Be a thing in Florida if I was inclined to take them all the way down there with me. And here we go. Hats. Oh, that chicken's lost a few feathers. I like this one though. It's just really, really tiny, so I don't think it's going to work. But at least there's a few, and uh, yes, I'm not even putting them on. They're, they're just way too small for me. I don't want to destroy them just to have a lark. So let's see. Pattern bag from Hawaii. You know, again, there's definitely vintage stuff. It's not like it's a high-end estate from the day, but it is from the day. And I'll bet there's something to find. I really should look at this Hawaii bag a little more closely. Uh, I don't know. 
Afghans. I've just gotten so many Afghans and I am not traveling in a way that's convenient to take a bunch of big stuff with me. So I think I probably will leave these, even though they're pretty decent ones. Ooh, there's some outfits for you. It is a fun place to look around. And they had some really great outfits. It's just a lot of these seem to be amateur made or costume. And so they're hard to sell. But there's a mirror under here. Now, if this is wood, it'd be great. But I'll bet it's plastic. And yep, sure is some sort of Sirocco type plastic from the 60s. Oh, usual housewares. I like the colors in the bathroom, though. A lot of places, the bathroom doesn't seem to work at estate sales. I think that's because they don't want you to use it, which I understand. That's a neat looking bathtub. All right. Well, very Harvest Gold and 70s looking, but this canister set is pretty complete, and that's a pretty good price, actually, for all the pieces. Really in great shape. It's a little traditional for where I'm headed, though. Portland is a little more hipster market, and I want to have things that are appropriate for where I'm going. I mean, these are really cute, too. These are later Randsburg before they went out of business after they stopped doing the big hand-painted flowers. Mm, usual kitchen stuff. The KitchenAid looks like it's got a super deluxe uh, spout there. Souffle. This is actually Georges Briard, believe it or not. We'll show you the bottom here in a minute after we get this screw out of here. Okay, there we go. Graphics, yes. Uh, it was ovenware. It's actually priced at a few dollars, and it's probably worth 8 or 10 or 12 This is in the 70s when putting words on things, which was kind of his idea, started to become a big design ethic. All right, we've got hanging stuff on the wall. I do like the, that looks like Lefton's Rooster and Roses. That's probably a good deal there. Old Mr. Coffee percolator or coffee pots with the flowers on them. Wow, very 70s. The original $15, I mean, to use, I guess. Please open. I like that. I think that's very smart because I notice when we do estate sales, people tend to shut the drawers all the time because they're trying to get to something above it or because they just are used to doing that at home. You don't leave the drawer open with all the knives sticking out, but you do it at an estate sale. So this is a good idea, I think. I'm pretty impressed so far. I mean, everything has been priced and, you know, I haven't found amazing stuff here, but they clearly didn't cherry pick everything that was interesting and old out of this place. So uh, you've got to say, I think so far, this estate sale seems run like I would run one of mine. I really like the wire furniture, and I also really like this ice crusher. It looks like it's got some problems, unfortunately, because otherwise I would buy that. That would definitely be a Portland thing, and they really work well. I've had one I've used for years. Gold percolator, and then the one behind it is the Sunbeam 1939 World's Fair inspired one. Lots of these trivets, $5 each, the very 70s look again. This place has got a lot of traditional. I do kind of like the hanging swag lamp there, though. I don't know if I like it enough to pay that price, but I see some vintage stereo equipment. Again, this is just too big for me to take with me. These are cool. These are horseless carriage or carriage lanterns from about 1900 priced at 120 the pair. That's kind of retail, though. The candlestick phones are cool, but they're missing the speaker portions. I like the shell. Yeah, I do really like these. I wish that they were less expensive. I just think they're interesting. People will put them on fence posts and things as decoration. And they're just one of those interesting things you could put a candle in and use them as a sconce on a wall. Ah, oh, here's something I like. Maybe someone was a newspaper boy or worked at a little stadium, but $15, yes, I will take that. Coin changers usually sell for $30 to $35 for me, sometimes more if there's something special about them. This is a pretty standard one, but it's in great condition. And it does quarters, which is important because it means somebody who might actually want to use one of these today might actually pick it up to use, because even though they were patented in the 1950s, they are really strong. So this dinnerware, the milk glass, these are all pretty much 
very ordinary pieces other than the butter dishes. The butter dishes are worth looking at because people buy butter dishes and don't necessarily need to collect the rest of the set. Milk glass is selling if it's the better quality, like the two patterns in the butter dishes, or the Westmoreland lace candlesticks here, which I really like. Only a few old slide cameras are worth money, but this I think is cool. This is pyrography from about 1910, I would say. And it's got someone's initials on it, but they did all the painting and they did the wood burning to get the design in it. It's an ink blotter and people can still use these. Oh yeah, 1909 right on it. Oh yeah, I'll take this. The furnishings are very much suburban 1960s, 70s furnishings, maple furniture and fairly traditional shapes and patterns. But then they have this stacking set of stools over here and this has modernist appeal. These two sell well. Uh, but they are pricing it accordingly, as you can tell. This is some of that West German glass from the 1980s, and if you can find it with the gold still on, which these are in great shape, it's actually very pretty and I think starting to be noticed. I am selling Reuven glass and things like that too. Speaking of which, what's down here? Uh, I would say, ooh, I like that. Hibiscus, Hawaii. Hmm. <clears throat> Yes, that's something I could take to Portland. I do still have collectors of Polynesian stuff out there. Let's see, this crystal is not Waterford? No. Oh, I do like this. I always enjoy these spice sets, and this one seems to be in really pretty good shape. This is from the 19 teens again, and done in English, and only 45 for the set. It's pretty basic, and it was made in Czechoslovakia, as so many of them were, but I like them. Let's see, this is, oh, the dugout, Las Vegas, yes. Yeah, I think anything from Vegas from the 60s and 70s is absolutely something to buy, especially in terms of ashtrays and especially for $3, so I'm going to take this. It looks like it has some schmutz, but I think I can get that off. The mushroom casserole with the big wood handles is pretty cool, actually. I like the artichokes, very 70s. Corel, of course. And, you know, they don't have a terrible price. I think it's 25 but for that big piece with the bale, it's probably worth it. And they've got a bunch of the cornflower blue, and their prices seem fine on that. It's just too heavy to carry. And then, wow, look at all the Old Country Roses by Royal Albert. They have a whole box full, and it looks to me like they have some serving pieces up above here. And there's the mark that you see. This is a nice, clean set. It is one pattern that still sells, and boy, that is a good price for what they have. With all the serving pieces and things, you could split this up and sell the serving pieces online and practically give away the dinnerware. Oh, wow. Fenton, $12. I like the color. This came out in the 50s originally and was made for, gosh, probably 20 years. I'll take the tray. The little cornucopia vases, or candle holders are not that easy to use, and the tumbler, well, we see those around. All right, well, we're finding some things. Hmm, let's see, fire water. Oh, this is right out of the 60s, and from the Poconos. Oh, yeah, I love it. $5? Yeah, I'll definitely have that. Well, I'm finding some fun stuff that'll go with me to Portland. Nothing really super amazing, but I definitely found some cool stuff and fun stuff. So let's see where we go from here. A little bit of Christmas in terms of ornaments and... Let's turn that sign around for them. So 35 for 10, that's not a terrible price. They're nice and fancy and they are definitely from the 70s. A little bit of costume jewelry. I don't like screwbacks at all. Neither do most people. I avoid them unless it's a thing that was only made with them. But this pin is nice. I might get this if the price is right. And it looks like most of it, again, sort of like the rest of the house. Fairly pedestrian, but some cute things, some nice things. Definitely worth looking through. Definitely priced right and fairly, and I think they'll have a good sale here. And I'm finding just enough stuff that's inexpensive and cute and fun that I think I can sell out west, so I'm happy. I do like this Parisian scene bracelet with the tassel with the Eiffel Tower on it. A set of... Flatware, some very ordinary art. I think we saw the milk glass. Ooh, wow, there is a couch for you. <laughs> oh, nail art. Yeah, this is kind of fun. This was the thing in the early 80s, and you can tell by the colors, but you would use nails to make designs. And it actually, yep, see, this is a professionally thing done, 1977, out of Reading, Pennsylvania. And, yeah, 
late 70s early 80s nail art was another one of those home crafts and i think at some point we're going to start appreciating the fact that the 70s was a crafty period there were a lot of things that people figured out how to do on their own partly because you know prices went up a lot it was hard to get work and so people were ingenious and found things they could do on their own and found out they had some skills and talents so i think they're kind of quaint and fun to collect I cannot say the same for the couch, although it is in great condition. The yard long would be nice if it was in a little better condition. This was printed in uh, Los Angeles and has to do with training exercises for the U.S. military. I think this is right around the end of World War II, judging by the planes and the jeeps I see in it. And it's neat. Okay, this is cute. I like this table set. You know I love nesting tables. Uh, a little on the large side for me. Oh, but the cart, ooh, that's even more tempting because the cart has double layers of display area. And if I could pack boxes in that cart, it wouldn't take up a lot of room. It's got the 70s wheels with plastic that are very typical for that period of time. And these nice little daisy wheels on the front. Yeah, it's very cute. And I think it's only $65. It's interesting because everything else, including this funky weird table, seems more expensive than I would expect in terms of patio furniture. Let's see what this drip glaze is. Oh, I see false graph. Yeah, well, we're close to where false graph was made, so it makes sense. And their drip glaze is a little more emphasis on controlled and right inside the rim. Hmm. I like a bunch of the patio furniture, I have to admit. I have no room for it, but I like it, and I think it would sell because it's been on this nice covered porch all of its life, so it seems like it's all really well taken care of. That garden cart is cute. The owl has plastic eyes, but yeah, well, that's all right. We don't need a big plastic owl right now anyway. Little Lazy Susan made of plastic, speaking of plastic, and California raisins. I always look when I see teak in good condition, and these have some age. They're from Thailand, probably 1980s. Unfortunately, they don't get the same respect that the earlier Danish designers do. This garden cart is also very cute and would probably be a good deal and has lots of shelving space. Now, see, they want $325 for the patio set, but it is really perfect. I mean, it's been protected and it's got all these chairs and pads and everything. Okay, well, down to the basement we go. And let's see what we have down here. Ooh, an old wall clock, it looks like. And I think that's Turner, actually. Yeah, the same company that made the Flamingo prints did these. They're not as popular, though, but they're interesting in a way as wall art. And some people still buy them. I don't see anything in this area other than this multi-drawer chest, which I'm actually surprised is still here because these are so popular right now basic hardware stuff, old cigar box, the old Westinghouse timer out of one of those big roasters. These usually still work. Okay, what's down here? Oh, kind of like the old crate. Chilean Riesling. Hmm. And that's a neat old barrel or apple bucket or whatever fruit bucket, but that price tells me that I'm not going to be buying the crate either, so I won't ask about that old bowling ball and big slab of wood that'd be fun to make a table out of Ooh, an old tv cart croquet set i mean the prices have gone up on these it's not terribly priced for what it is okay the sled i just sold my sled finally Ooh, jarts wow Looks like it's all there, but the box is pretty toasted and kind of damp. I notice there's a dampness to a lot of stuff down here, and uh, that could really be a problem, even though the price is really good, and I would definitely sell this in Portland. I just think the condition is going to be a little difficult with that box, especially because if you try to sell it online, you have to say that you're selling the box and not say that you have the parts, which is so silly. This is a very pretty French set, and this is one of these sad family stories where it was really well painted and very cute and very small with the bed, so people upgraded, and then this ends up in the basement, and 
time and moisture and things are not so good to it but it seems like it's in decent shape overall they want 550 for this set i think that's a little bit rich because it is going to need some veneering and then here's the sub basement and wow look at that crazy linoleum floor people had so much fun back then with that it looks like there's records of course and more wire furniture yeah that would have had a place for the television in the middle of it that could be a night table now looks like sort of run-of-the-mill books and household stuff and a vintage tv and a whole lot of paper stuff kind of the usual more maple furniture the whole collection of nancy drew books being sold all together there's probably some money in that because that was the first group of books that and the hardy boys uh, they started way back at the turn of the last century and they were the first books written for children of a little older age that were about kids doing exciting things like this and so uh, it's transcended several generations and it makes me think it will continue to do so but I don't want to put that much out for one big heavy thing that I would have to haul it looks a little more early 80s but this roller disco-y packaging is very funny on this set she had her hair done by a flock of seagulls this is really cool unfortunately again it's been in the basement and it may be a little too corroded but if it's cheap i'll take it because it's peels light beer and it's actually a little heavier tray which lets us know it's from the late 50s early 60s it definitely got it sat down here in what looks like it was a really fun rumpus room at one time and then was just sort of forgotten there is some fun stuff like these nautical lamps here are quite impressive from the 1970s i just love this floor i can't stop looking at it but there is other stuff that's kind of cool here too uh there is the back bar and everything you can tell this was a fun house to live in at one point and i'm sure it will be again for its new owner barware but i don't see anything else yeah see now these there here's the next generation this tray is lighter than the other one but this is still of some value because it's 1960s maybe early 70s but again surface rust so that's going to leave that out for me it's unfortunate that things were allowed to get a little bit uh, wet down here it's hard to control in the 70s these lamps with celebrities especially from early film or silent era were really very popular there was a whole series of figures by a company that made may west and wc fields and then you see this lamp here and that's really fun this looks like treasure craft but it's not you can see a black label on the bottom this is one of the many japanese companies treasure craft had to sue over the years to stop copying their designs and it's a little lighter weight and not quite right but it was also being sold at the discount stores for cheap so they had to get cease and desist it's uh, this goes on in industry all the time it's happening today every day the black amethyst ashtray with the match holders is kind of cute a little bit worn though so i see fun stuff there probably was better stuff earlier in the day i didn't get here bright and early another kind of cute ashtray there let's see if we can read it oh yes miami beach hmm oh these are great i love these it's too bad this guy is distended but this one looks fine he's the more basic one that just opens his mouth or pops his head up or something but yep okay there the mouth works yep in working order nine dollars that's a good enough price i usually get about 20 on these they're hand carved in germany this one would be fun but there's just not enough to it it's missing the stopper apparently so nope we'll just go with what we've got japanese souvenir slippers a 60s thing okay records let's get a glimpse real quickly just to see if there's anything that we'd even take the time i see frank sinatra which i know a lot of people love him but it's common stuff i see some compilations i see yeah a lot of the kind of record that doesn't really do anything for me another conquistador plaque there that was a theme in this house apparently laundry room looks sparse all right we've got one more place to go i like the black painted stool although i think that is a paint job so 
this little guy would be great if he had his arm and it's too bad there isn't a way to get one because even at 75 he's a fantastic price he's the organ bank so it's like an organ grinder and he flips your coin up into the slot so he is a mechanical bank a very basic one but an early one well, here's my impression of my first New Jersey estate sale. I would call it well-organized, professionally run, very helpful, very friendly. Everything was priced, and things were priced fairly, but not at huge bargains because they were paying attention. So I'd seen signs that there was another sale down the street, and here it is. I have heard a little bit about this because I overheard a guy at the last sale talking about how he heard a guy offer $500 on a pair of bikes and they wanted 600 and wouldn't budge and well I haven't seen the bikes but that might be a really good deal I don't think it's this bike I think this guy's keeping his bike and after reading this sign I sure hope this person parked here as a staff member in any event that's why it's so important to come have your own experience and not just stay away because you heard somebody say something negative about a place it could be it's just not their cup of tea or what they were looking for and you'll find a great bargain. Now these are cool but they're pretty recent. They're offshore and they are sandblasted so they're very basic. Yes they're they're etched like cameo but I would call them more of an etching than a real cameo glass treatment because it's just one layer of glass. Melmac this has got a crack in it so don't believe that Melmac never breaks. I do like the Stangle. I think they're just such happy patterns. It was made near here in Flemington, New Jersey. So I'm coming in through the garage, partly because I see that this is a small house and there seem to be a lot of people in it. Oh, old Boy Scout canteen with the person's name sewn on it from the 50s. These don't sell for a ton, but I'll bet it's cheap. I don't see prices on anything. Not like the last sale. Everything was priced at the last sale. Oh, uh, it's too bad the transistor is damaged because that's pretty cool. Blue Ridge Pottery. I've always liked this stuff, and Strawberry is one of the better patterns. I just have a lot of dinnerware right now, and even though it's starting to sell, I don't need to necessarily buy more, but it's nice. I already have a crash. Oh, it looks like you can go in through the back. Is that true? Huh, okay. Well, maybe because it's a small house, they've opened both the front and the back. Usually you can only go in in that one way. And here we go. Cute house. Seems well maintained. Ooh, a lot of people. Azure Blue Fostoria Jamestown pitcher. That would be worth something, but that chip is horrible. I would throw that away. Let's see. This is probably Italian, the Turin, and then I've got a bunch of these trivets. Ooh, I like the color of this. This is Harlequin. This is the line mate to Fiesta in the late 30s, and the blue is a nice original color. It looks flawless. So starting in the back, I found something kind of neat right away that uh, nothing's got a price. So I'm assuming that they're going to just price everything when we get it up in a pile. It looks like another well-kept house in the same era as the other one. Maybe a little bit more formal. But everything seems to be nice in the right era. Costume jewelry. I don't see anything that looks really fabulous in that. Not so far anyway. I just bought so much yesterday I don't even know what I'm thinking. I spent $3,500 on costume jewelry in here. I'm looking for more. <laughs> but you gotta buy it when you see it. Lucky Strikes Again pin. Some old patches. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll take that. Cigarette stuff does well for me now. Lots of other stuff, but mm, kind of a so-so chain with a nice color of bead. Christmas tree pin. I do like fussing around in little boxes with random stuff because you never know what you'll find. And sometimes valuable things are small. This looks like it could be Israeli brass from the 1960s or 70s. Let's check out this cabinet over here. Very traditional style cabinet. I see Pinocchio records and kids records which don't sell very well for me. Nice pattern of Wedgwood from the 80s and that actually would sell that little Demitas cup if it was cheap enough. I see prices on almost nothing. This is Orifors it looks like. 
and that's a nice piece the apple i've seen a few apples around so i wonder if maybe this was a teacher who lived here you know it's just the color and the quality that draws me to these i know that the royal copenhagen bed vases and the ving and grondel don't sell for a lot but they're just so well done and again i don't see anything priced this is a different strategy of doing an estate sale this is a small house with a ton of stuff and it's all sort of of ordinary value with the exception of a few things so they seem to have priced the expensive things and left everything else to just be decided when you get there i'm curious to see whether that means i'll get a better deal these fast stand little magnifiers i had one at an estate sale and we put a price on it and it sold and then we had another and another and so i eventually figured out that people do like to buy these they'll spend about 15 dollars or 20 and so they're worth getting if you can get them cheap I like this. That's another Royal Copenhagen, and they really did do nice designs. It's very modernist. This guy. I just sold this guy, and he's a big cast iron doorstop shaped like a Scotty from the 1930s, and they have 70 on theirs, and that's what I got for mine, so I feel better because I thought I had sort of sold him too cheap. This little box here. Oh, Villery and Bach, yes. They certainly make nice stuff. Here we go, I'll show you this guy a little bit closer, and yeah, he's got the name around the collar there, and he looks like he's in pretty comparable shape to the one that I had, right down to the tail, which is always just slightly rusty from sitting right on the floor. Anyhow, I'm getting a little bit of a pile here, and I don't see a place to put it. There's a bunch of paper ephemera here, and I see a stock certificate. I'm curious to see who this is because I like old stock certificates. So let me put this down so I can grab this. And ooh, looky there, Studebaker Packard Corporation. Oh my gosh, is that what all of these are? That is really crazy. Of course, I have driven several Studebakers in my lifetime. Yeah, these were framed up and put out at a price. Oh, there's a Studebaker ad. Somebody in the family must have had an interest or been in the collector's club. I wonder who these people were. I see a bunch of various paraphernalia and framed goods and fun things over there and some nice furniture and lamps. I mean, everything here, again, very well kept, but there's just not a lot that's really my style. And again, without prices on things to go by, you know, you'd want to make sure on a big piece that you knew what you were paying before. You that's a neat looking little painting. It doesn't look really important, but it's got a nice signature. It's definitely of a style done around 1910, and sometimes these artists are worth a little bit of money. I'm going to look him up. It's about 1900 with that wood back, and we'll see if this is anybody important. Well, sadly enough, it is not somebody who is a listed artist, but I like the piece. Now, I like beads, but I am avoiding buying beads unless there's something special and interesting about them. And I'm looking to see if anything fits the bill. I, oh, like these are a good example. So these turn out to be glass rather than plastic, which is what it looked like. And so, yeah, I'm happy to have those. We will just set those with our little growing pile of stuff right in there. This has become our carry-on. These are very pretty blown glass blue pieces over here, but I believe they are museum reproductions, if I remember right. On the other hand, even though they're traditional, I really like the vibrant color and the height of these candlesticks. I think I'll get those when I have a free hand. And what else? I like the Austin Sculptures pieces. There's the museum label on that picture that I was mentioning before. A uh, little figurine here. I think he's Corday, isn't he? Yes, he is. But if you don't have the couple, they're unlikely to sell. This is another nice decorative art piece that was made right here in New Jersey, and there have been a lot of collectors in the past. This is fun because it's mixed metal from Mexico. And this is a Fenton blue butterfly. I think I'll put that in my pile because it's nice and small and in great condition, it appears. All right, we're getting a pile. I finally just decided to make myself a whole pile under the table because I just can't carry all this anymore. Franklin Mint made a whole bunch of these pewter folks of uh, various sorts, and there were several artists who did them back in the 1970s and early 80s, and they're really well done, and they just don't sell. It's a shame that pewter is so out of style right now, but they go cheap. 
uh, you think the entire set here you can get on eBay for about less than $10 each if you buy them all together. And they're really well done. It's actually surprising, considering that some Franklin Mint stuff actually goes pretty high that has similar workmanship. But Pewter right now is not getting much respect. I do like the clock, but it's a wind-up and that makes it a tough sell, unfortunately. That's a cute little stand. It's looking sort of like Biedermeyer. Oh, another fun bathroom with the tile, and this one's blue. Wow. Yes, that's funny. I had a pink bathroom, and my sister had a blue one, so a few things for sale in here. I don't see anything that I really can't live without, though. Nothing in the broom closet or the pantry or whatever this is. Lots of stemware. Okay, where haven't we been? This is a tight little house, but I think there might be more to find. And, you know, without knowing prices, you just you just figure you're going to get a good deal and take your chances. I haven't seen anything priced overly high of the things that were priced. Nice Italian 60s piece. And now to the last formal bedroom. And wow, there's some very pretty 1930s, 40s era furniture here. And, ooh, Fenton Black Rosecrest? Wow, you never see it with the black. This is rather unusual, even though it's a regular piece from their line. The fact that they did it in the peach blow with the black rose is very good. You know they love the tchotchkes if they have a French-style vitrine in their bedroom <laughs> full of tchotchkes. Tonala Bird. Doesn't seem to have a maker's signature on it. Oh, and then randomly, another Studebaker thing. I'm sure I'm the only person coming to this sale who knows what these are, so I have to put them in my pile. These are replacement emblems for the 1965 and 66 that had the Chevy 283 engine instead of the Studebaker-made engine. They were made up in Canada for a couple of years. So now we find out whether the prices are good or are they ridiculous. I'm hoping that they're good, and I have a feeling they will be. Well, it turned out the prices were really good and the people were really great. The guy in the black is Felix and he is a viewer and he heard me just say something to the cashier and said, oh, I recognize your voice. So, so much for being incognito. I was found out, but it was a lot of fun. I got to meet the nice people who run this estate sale business and, you know, they just do theirs differently. They price the important stuff and don't spend the time messing with the little stuff and they do just fine too. So there's more than one way to skin a cat or a hippo. I enjoyed both sales, though, and I did probably get better prices at the one where the things weren't priced. I'll show you the results of that here. But I've got to say, overall, New Jersey really impressed me. I thought the people were lovely, and the towns are cute, and there is a lot more to it than I expected, and I will definitely come back for more estate sales. Well, my friend and I are here to say goodbye from New Jersey, and... If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.